Howdy y'all, welcome to Lax Lives, I'm Lakander, and this is Lack Plays Starbound. Alright, so I managed to get the uh, Rubium upgrade. I now have access to Impervium. Uh, you can see I got 23 bars of Impervium all ready to go here. So we are gonna look at the weapons. I am, I am having issues deciding which weapon I want, honestly. Uh, now, the spears have really high damage. Look at this, 4,166 4, DPS, uh, and it only takes five bars, so I might make a couple of weapons to decide what I want. Damage per swing is 3,333. Uh, Annoyance of the Gods, which is a one-handed, is 2,000 damage. Uh, Timmy <laughs> is 4,000 damage per swing. Uh, and it is 4,444 DPS, it says. I might do Timmy, uh, honestly. Uh, King's Ruin is uh, pretty low at 1,400 deep damage and 2,800 DPS here. Uh, Bane of the Gods, the two-handed weapon, is only 2,800 DPS and 2,000 damage, of course, because why would the two-handed sword be really powerful? Um, Ajax is uh oh that's a hammer timmy's a hammer uh is uh 4166 uh 333 3333 3, 3, 3, 3, i mean uh for damage so the axe and the spear have the same the same dps and the but that hammer has got massive amounts of dps so i'm going to i think i'm going to do this i'm going to grab um we have enough to do a couple here so i'm going to do timmy because 4,000 damage in the swing uh, versus the 3,000 damage in the alien. So let's grab this thing, and then we will grab Alien Bane, and we'll see which one I prefer. Uh, and then that's uh, pretty much it, because Bane of the Gods there takes 10. See, that's what's ridiculous. This takes 10. Timmy takes 10. Alien Bane takes five. Uh, and I understand, like, if you're making it for real, you know, there would be a difference, but um, come on, really? Timmy. All right. And we can get rid of our Rubium two handed sword that I don't think really ever managed to kill anything. Uh, and then next, let's look at the armor. I don't think I've got enough to do any of the armor. Uh, Trailblazer, it's called. No, that's what we. That's the Rubium stuff. What's the. Adventures of Iolium, Wanderer was Ceruleum, Seeker, Ferosium, Outrider was Durasteel. Here we go, Universally, Universalist Tech Pants, Tech Helm, Tech Jacket. Uh, so, 400, well let's look at just the chest. The chest is uh, 400, 250, 48. What I'm wearing is 175, 90, 26. So yeah, it's a huge upgrade. Well, I didn't do like two upgrades in a row, but... Uh, oh, I also wanted to go to a new planet. We're getting out of here. We're not, we're not exploring this stupid moon anymore. I've been to the core. I've been all the way around it. Um, let's be careful not to kill my chef. Uh, okay, so we're going to look for a new system here. Let's uh let's just wander way over here someplace. Um Okay, what about this one here? You've got one planet, it's level seven. I can't do level seven. Arid level ten. It's pretty big. Um I don't like arid though. Let's uh let's try here at the point of this little Okay, this is a good sector here. What have we got? We got a level seven, a level nine asteroid field. Asteroid fields suck though. Uh, six, eight, seven. Those are all useless. I need nine or higher. Not tentacles. Oh, we're definitely going to tentacles. Please don't lock up on the way to tentacles. I hate when you get caught in the 
warp thing. Grab a quick drink of lemonade there while we're teleporting. Or hyper jumping or whatever. I just finished recording my Seven Days to Die, so I've been talking for close to 40 minutes. Uh, come on. Yeah, my Seven Days to Die he pulled a quick switch on me. They, uh, <laughs> they didn't update to a new version. They they updated to a subversion. So we went from 7.5 to 7.6 since the last time I played. But 7.6 added new stuff to the map, uh, which never happened. So I had to start my map over. All right, tentacles. This could be crazy. What does a tentacle planet look like? Oh, look, it's tentacles. It's sur it's surrounded by tentacles. Oh, is it going to be all poisonous? Because that's going to suck. Look at the tentacles in the background. Oh, I could live with this hammer, maybe. The colors... Oh, I didn't even see that guy! <laughs> that didn't work. Like, he was standing there, right? It wasn't just my... He didn't just appear out of the ground, did he? Alright. Oh! He wasn't attacking me. I didn't expect him to get all mad. This is the problem with not having upgraded armor. Alright, we'll go this way then. They don't want me to go that way? Oh man, the hammer just took him out with one hit. This is doable. This is definitely doable. This is the uh, most powerful weapon I've seen in the game so far right here. Oh, I... <laughs> I can't see those little guys. I'm blind or something. Come on, we want to see if there's anything on this tentacle planet. This is kind of cool. It's squishy, too. You hear it? Squish, squish. Go away. I saw you that time. I'd stay and fight, but they're stupid... Uh, Cat birds trying to kill me. That's right. Smushed you into nothing. Um, yeah, the... Uh, uh, oh, and this stuff just corrupted dirt blocks, it says. This stuff just digs right up. The uh, uh, impervium is made out of rubium. Ugh. I was going to jump up here, and I totally slipped and fell off, and I thought that was it for me. Are you evil or good? Okay. I thought that last guy was good, and then he turned out to be... Oh, you know what? My axe is in my inventory. But I need this, I need this coal, because I need coal and rubium. Not that I'm seeing a whole lot of rubium on this planet. Oh, you didn't make it. Oh, the slime is getting to me. Uh, okay. Impervium, you go down here. Uh, moon rocks. My last planet was a moon. Oh. <laughs> okay, so I tried twice. I couldn't make it up there. I put down a platform, and you just jump it like it's nothing. Thanks, dude. Thanks. I still haven't seen tech upgrades which is sad uh, they must have been removed from the game or something I don't know uh, that was that was rubium I had to get the rubium because we're gonna need a ton uh, and well not a ton I guess but I need enough to upgrade to the armor so that I'm protected better than I am now Ooh. USCM penal colony haha <laughs> Very cool. <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> awesome. I'm not kidding. This is the coolest thing I, I think I've seen. A penal colony. I... Oh, she got me. <laughs> uh, 
those are some big red bows there, ladies. Uh, oh. Answer the phone, somebody. I looked. Uh, I think I mentioned before, I was going to try to see if I could turn off the ringer on that thing, and I cannot figure out how to turn off the ringer on that phone. So we are stuck with the occasional telephone sounds. I'm liking this hammer. I wish I'd have known this is the way they swung before. I was thinking they were terrible. But they're way better than the spear for me. I can't hit things with the spear. I need the arc. Uh, when I use the spear, I just miss. That's right, little dude. There's a couple pieces of coal here. There's so much diamond when you get up this high. It's ridiculous. I wish I could just unlock level 10 right at the beginning and just fly to these places. The one thing I find weird, though, is there's no iron. There's, n like, no iron after the second or third... Look at that fireball's bouncing. Uh, after the second or third sector... And then they give you recipes later that require iron, and then I never have any, so I have to fly back to the first sector to to get some, which I hate. Although it's not so bad now, because I have so much uranium and uh, plutonium and stuff to power my ship that it's not that bad to fly around. But when coal is your fuel of choice... See, look at all that uranium right there. I don't even need it. I need all the coal that I wasted on fuel. <laughs> oh, you got three eyes. Oh, no, there's two of you there. Ooh, right there, that's plutonium. See that little pink ore in the ground? Uh, when I was playing earlier, uh, getting ready for the episode, you know, mining up the oh, whew, rubium and stuff, um, I, uh, I got all the way down to the core, and there's just this black ore all over the place down there on the moon, and I'm like, black ore? What in the world? I haven't seen that before. And, uh, so I finally got down to it, and this looks like it could be rubium right here. Just wait for that cat bird thing to fly away. Uh, and it turned out to be uranium. It was just, uh lighting glitch in the game made it look black and I was all excited because I thought I'd found some kind of special ore oh, I'm glad you were friendly oh psh. oh there's some more rubium I gotta grab the rubium it's uh like I said it's not that plentiful surprisingly uh it might look like it but it's it's kind of like trying to find iron when you're in the first section. Sometimes you find huge, huge uh, veins of it, but most of the time... You build off of that, please, so I can get up here. Thank you. Most of the time, I barely find any. Like, look at this. Here's one piece. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, I missed. Just a little guy. That makes me really nervous. There's a bunch. Come on! Little dude. Oh yeah, that's a good size vein right here. This is nice. Uh, I don't think we'll get enough to do up the armor, because we need, uh, what, like around 80 pieces and that means I need 80 of this and 80 coal. Uh, no, this means I need like 160 of the ore. We're not even to 40 and then I need uh, I've got like 32 coal and we need like 100 coal to go with it. Oh man, look at the ore here. Give it to me. I need it all. Oh, oh, oh. You're not what I thought you were. I heard that guy making his horsey sound, but I really thought he was one of those 
multi-eyed guys. He was not. He tried to kill me. Man, I'm uh, I've been reading this book. Spoilers. I talked about it uh, some episodes over the weekend here, and uh, uh, perfectly generic item. <laughs> Uh, that's not good. I already have a hoe. That's terrible. Miss Starblade. I'm a level 10 planet. Could I get some uncommon items, please? Whoa. Did I get away from the tentacles? Oh, why can't I see these little red guys? I appear to have gotten away from the tentacle section of the planet. So this is the side of the planet that's not being eaten by the large monster. Apparently. Because I gotta keep saying apparently. Apparently. <laughs> but yeah, I've been reading this book. And uh, I'm on the second one now. And the book is called... Well, the series is called Quarantine. It's by... I don't know. Lex Thomas or something like that. Oh, dang it! I saw him and then it was too late. Alright, well, let's, uh, let's see if we can't cook up some of this. Rubium. And uh, what's this? Oh, that's plutonium. Oh, let's put some in our uh, ship's fuel sources here. Because we're down to 790. Put this in here. Oh, yeah, that's way too much fuel. Uh, there we go. See, look, at half my stack of the plutonium I got that I'm not even using. Whoops. Will uh, fuel my ship. Oh, yeah, th tech. I have no tech. I have never found any tech. What about on the 3D printer? Do you have tech? No. You have nothing. Weird. I don't know where to get tech from. I miss my double jump. Uh, we're just about to the point. If the game doesn't do some drastic change, um, then we're going to be building a base uh, as soon as I pick a planet. Uh, which I think should be fun, because I really want to try out the... Uh, you slide down. I really want to try out the uh, uh, sky rails they've got in here. Uh, oh, this isn't where I make my rubium, is it? i got to make it over here. Or not rubium, my invernium. In, in, what's it called? I forgot what it's called. My... Impervium. Huh. Impervium. Impervium bars. Alright, here we go. We want to make as many as you'll let me. 38. What was I doing? Oh yeah, we're going to... This should give us enough to make the chest plate, right? Because uh, I want to start with as much armor as possible. Awesome. So where's our super special chest plate? Universalist Tech, tech Jacket. So we are upgrading from... What's that? Chef spawner. I spawned a chef. Uh, 175 health, 90 defense, and I'm guessing 28 heat to 400 health, 250 armor, 48 heat. 250 armor to my 90 armor. Yeah, that's... Uh, that's a bit of an upgrade, I must say. Uh, let's see, we went that way last time, right? Uh, we'll go back this way this time. But, uh, yeah, so I was uh, reading this uh, Quantum Armor. No, wow. Don't even listen to what I just said. So I was reading this book called Quarantine. And... Uh, <laughs> At the end of the book, uh, one of the characters escapes from the quarantine, and they don't tell you what happened to him. And then the next book starts, and it picks up with the people who are still trapped in quarantine. And the whole first book is about the guy who escaped, basically. And uh, so I'm like, okay, what happened to the guy? And you read, you read, you read, and I'm like, okay, what happened to the guy? This is book two now. What happened to the guy? And, uh... Yeah. 
he got killed out of book apparently just randomly they're just like oh yeah we saw this dead body and it matched the description of the guy who escaped in the first book uh and here's all the stuff that he had on him that would indicate it was him and uh the description of the guy is so unique that there's no possible way it could be anything but him so yeah he's dead thanks book thanks i read a whole book guy escapes and it was pointless uh, what happened to those? They left, apparently. I left the door open, and they escaped. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh. <laughs> Why do the prisoners have... The, apparently the prisoners have taken over... The inmates are running the asylum. Isn't that the saying? I want to go check this... Uh, Check this uh, filing cabinet over here. Aw, oh, you can't search the filing cabinet. That's a shame. <laughs> I like this. Uh, I like this prison though. It's kind of funny. Uh, all right, these people make me nervous. She didn't even fire her weapon. What's in your chest? Holy kill arm. Nope, that's useless. And some throwing axes. Uh, actually, I have the throwing axes equipped. We never did try these. Let's see. Oh. Oh! She's not carrying a gun. I don't know what that was. I think she hit me with a table. It really looked like a table to me. <laughs> it was not... All right, we're going to go back and finish her off. Co-ed prison, apparently. Oh, there's some coal. We need this. We need the coal. The coal is important. I'm glad there's coal on this planet. That's really handy. Uh, with the coal, and... I just wish I could find some more... Rubium. Oh, come on. Oh, he didn't kill me. Did you see that? He only did, like, 90 damage to me. They were one-shotting me earlier. That's awesome. I forgot about the chest plate already that I just put on. Oh, there's a piece. And there's a piece of coal. Rubium and coal. Make some pervium. Except I don't really feel impervious. Oh, I didn't see you. Shh. It's a good thing I'm wearing that armor. Stop spitting at me, you stupid cat. Purple guys on a purple world are difficult to see. Red guys anywhere, apparently for me, are difficult to see. Uh, and they're not really all that red, so I don't know why I don't notice them. I think it's because uh, most things are huge, and those guys are like... Just little tiny flat guys on the ground, practically. <laughs> Uh, uh, ooh, my other book I was reading, too. I finished a couple of books this, uh, this weekend. Uh, I read, uh, the last of my Black Company books. I don't know if, uh, you heard me talk about them before, but I, uh, been reading the Black Company series by Glenn Cook. See, that one I know. And, uh, alright. You're not killing me this time. That's right. I killed you. That's right. Blocked! Whoa, 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 whoa. Look at all these people. That was close. I like the security camera. That's pretty cool. Uh, oh, there's one up here, too. But, uh... Yeah, it ended... Pretty much the way it should have, I guess. The um, I read like the first... I think there's new books in the series. Um, I'm going to have to check that out and get my hands on them if they are. But um, the, the books I have were Omnibuses. And uh, so... Uh, 
I read like the first nine or ten books of the series, and they finished the story of the guy who's that's a toilet, right? <laughs> oh, was it flushed? You know, the artwork on this is pretty nice. Uh, I'm kind of impressed that they've got this security, maximum security prison look in the game. It's kind of funny. Miss with the wrong biped. You. Oh, stabbed me. You can meet my hammer. This little jumpy dude up here. Which garden? Ooh, I'll take that. What do you got up here? Oh, you stabbed me. Somehow somebody got outside the prison and is going crazy. Um, but yeah, it was... Uh, the Black Company was kind of a unique series to me because it follows the mercenary group and uh, they uh, like the guy who's writing the first book is the analyst you know he keeps the journals of where the company's at and what it's doing and all that and so the whole book is supposed to be the journals of the people who are the analysts of the black company the whole series I mean and so um, the first guy it writes the first five well the first guy writes like the first four and a half books and then someone else writes part of the fourth book if I remember correctly and then um, like the sixth book is totally unrelated to the others and I haven't read it yet. So I guess technically I haven't read the first ten books. I need to read it yet. But it didn't continue the story with the main group and so I wasn't... It's probably going to turn out to be like related to the story somehow and I totally should have read it but I was like, man, they just left this place. I don't want to read about the people who got left behind who aren't part of the Black Company. That's not the... It's not anything I want to do. Um, and so I didn't read it. <laughs> I have it. It's, it's, I'm going to start reading it tonight. But, uh, uh, and so then the la the next two books were written by someone totally unrelated, well, not totally unrelated, but one of the other guys in the Black Company who was training to be the analyst, um, writes the next two books and, uh, ooh, that was close. Uh, let's get those dues. What's that? Let's get the uh, red stem pack up here on the bar. Get that chugged down here. Uh, but uh, I like this. Can I get in this? Aw, that's a shame. I want to get strapped down. Um, oh, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. Whew. I thought I was going to die. I did not. But, uh, the, um, the next couple books actually jump back in time, like, a couple of years, and start telling the story over again. Not the whole story, because they go through, like, I don't know, seven or eight years, it feels like, before they get to the point where they switch writers. Uh, not writers, the, the same guy writes the whole series. Uh, but, uh, uh, because the books are supposed to be written by the, oh, crap, <laughs> that's totally my fault. Um, but so the series is written by, you know, one author, but he writes it from the point of view of different people. So you read like five books and then they've got a book by somebody totally not in the black company, as far as I can tell. And then the next book picks up with two books by somebody different who's in the Black Company, but part of the Black Company gets... I don't want to say capture, but they get trapped. There we go. Part of the Black Company gets trapped. Well, actually, both parts of the Black Company get trapped, and that's why they switch who's writing. 
And so then that guy starts riding, and then um, he goes to rescue... No, no, uh, he... he uh, they think the first guy's dead is what it is, and so then he starts riding, but he picks up the story from earlier while the campaign was going on that they're in the middle of, and... Um, tells his side of what went down in earlier parts. And then it finally catches up, and then there's a book with him. And uh, and then he and the first guy, who turns out not to be dead, and a bunch of people get captured. And so then the next book is, um, like, ten years later and written by somebody totally new. And then she's the analyst and the captain of the black company. And then that goes on for, I don't know, like a book, uh, or maybe two. And then, um, they managed to free the people from the first book. And then there's, there's bits and pieces from a couple of different one of them. They went up with like three people writing this story. So it's a little weird because of the way it's told. But it really seems like the Black Company can't win. I mean, they don't ever lose, per se. uh, But they don't win in a good way. And a lot of their victories are just they outlast their enemy. (laughs) Um, But it's pretty good. Uh, I, I like it because it's unique. There isn't, like... They're not heroes. They're not, like, you are fated to save the world. Um, it's more like uh, we happen to be here and nobody else is doing anything about it. And so um, it was really funny to me because by the end of the by the end of the story, um, the uh, the analyst, the first one, his name's Croker, uh, he's talking to the princess of this uh, city. And they wanted to just pass through the city. And the prince and the princess who were ruling the city at the time, wouldn't let them and they wouldn't tell them the truth about what was going on and they told them flat out you hire the black company we do the job you pay us we go on our way if you don't pay us or you betray us the black company will take you out that's the way it always is that's what happens and so she tries to betray them in the middle of the book and uh and so by the end of the book she's the only one left uh, basically, from the ruling party that was there when uh, the black company got hired, and she's like, "You destroyed my city," and he's like, "You know what? The funny thing is, we just wanted to pass through. We didn't even want to stop in your city, and you wouldn't let us go. And uh, and you know what? You hired us, and we told you flat out. Um, so it's your own fault." But, uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was pretty good. All right, I'm going to call the episode here. Uh, so go ahead and click like if you like, subscribe, be sure and catch the next one, and I will talk to you later.